and welcome to the CHGO Sky podcast brought to you by PointsBet, uh, your hopefully number one source for WNBA and Chicago Sky info. Today is September 9th, 2022. Uh, we come to you today. Uh, I, I, I wish we were talking to everyone on much better circumstances, but hence we are not. Uh, so the schedule is a little bit off. Uh, so this Monday, uh, this past Monday was Labor Day. Uh, so we did not have a show. So uh, we decided to push a emergency show. I, I don't know if you would call this an emergency show. This is, this is really more so a therapy session. I think. <laughs> um, oh, crap. That's right. If you're wondering who I am, I'm Janice Gurrio. Uh, with me, as always, is Sabria Whitaker. Uh, now, Sabria, yesterday was your birthday. Let's start it off was. on a positive note here. Let's it talk. was. <laughs> Let us start off on a positive note. All right. So uh, besides uh, what, what, whatever the hell that was from the sky yesterday, how was your birthday? It was great up until then. It was a pretty great birthday. Got a lot of love, uh, love shown on Twitter, including love from you. Thank you for my birthday gift. And it was great. <laughs> up until this game for the most part but also i didn't have tickets to the game and that's a whole nother thing of like how my birthday could have been better but then it was like hmm, would i have wanted to be there for that so it was fine yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I think you did yourself a favor by not going to that game, honestly. Uh, but I, I thought they were going to pull it off. I honestly thought they were. Like all, all, me and the rest of Chicago, right? Uh, essentially, they, like you didn't think they were going to pull it off, really? Well, after Game Four, so I had kind of been. My ba- my birthdays are actually pretty terrible. Like my birthdays suck. Like last year, actually this year. Um, my wisdom tooth. So I had a wisdom tooth come in last year because oh, no. of it. I, when I go back and look on my like pharmacy thing, cause I was just at the dentist two days ago, I had to get a prescription for wisdom tooth stuff the day before my birthday last year. And then I had to push the surgery back because it was my, I was like, no, it's my birthday. Like on the ninth, I'll be in LA for a sparse game. Let's push it back. So I did all that, had to get my tooth removed and then like had the surgery. The next day I'm on the plane to Atlanta because LA was playing in Atlanta. So I'm like hoping and praying the stitches don't come out. Definitely was not supposed to fly after that. Didn't listen this year around my birthday. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this? Like my tooth is hurting again. It's the last wisdom tooth that's coming in. And the doctor's like, nope, you need surgery again. So I have been on payments for like three days. So after they lost game four, I already knew. I was like, that was a stupid loss. And it was a blowout. And it was pretty embarrassing. And I was like, I really don't want them to play on my birthday because the way my birthdays play out, we're going to lose. I said this like a week ago. I was like, if we have to play on my birthday, we're going to lose. And then they were like, yep, you got to play on your birthday. I said, okay, we're going to lose. And then as it's maybe like somewhere in the fourth, I was like, you know what? This is feeling like we were going on a run. And I was like, you know what this is feeling like? And Aaliyah was like, what? And I was like, this feels like last year when we thought we were losing we were down and Phoenix went on that run in that game four. And I was like, it's feeling like that, but the other way around, because I know how we are. We can't go on runs too soon. Like we have to have a big run or we can't go on a run. It's like the last two minutes, any run before like the last two minutes, it's not safe. The energy is going to just completely shift and we're going to lose. And I said that to her. I was like, Nope, we don't have it. I said from the energy, I was like, we don't have it. And that situation with Ka and the one, I mean, we're going to get into this. I have a theory on that. So just come back to me when we get to that, because I have a theory on that. But yeah, I knew we were going to lose. Yeah, uh, especially because uh, this game gave me just nightmare flashbacks to game one versus the Liberty, uh, where, uh, yeah, just a lot of the same energies left. And like we said before on the show, like no lead is safe when it comes to the postseason. 
So uh, the Sky had their biggest lead, a 10-point lead. Uh, Ka uh, sunk a three with 4-10 left in the third. Uh, so, yeah, it was right then and there where I, I didn't want to tweet it out. I, I didn't want to say, yeah, we got this because, of course, that's going to be cursed. So I just basically said, we've got 10 minutes left. We've got 10 minutes left to play. Um, yeah, and they definitely just couldn't even play for 10 lousy minutes. Uh, goodness. But it, was, anyway. it was really the jerseys. Like, when I saw the jerseys, I was like, really? The blue jerseys. The I'm blue like, jerseys. really? Like, I know that you think the curse is broken and all of that. Like, that's cute. But, like, really? And then when Candace got off to that rough start, I was like, oh, you know how I said in the New York Liberty Series, if all of our starters don't hit – double digits and everyone is not like coming in with positive energy we're not gonna win yes yes indeed i i totally agree and also too uh there was a certain bench player that got double digits in scoring uh in game four did we see her play last night oh you mean the person who got 10 points in 10 minutes but we never play her I am just going, I, I am punching air still. I am absolutely punching air on that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to break that down in just a little bit. Um, so this quote from Coach Wade uh, during the post-game se session yesterday, this is probably going to hurt me for a long time. I probably could have done a better job of getting them a bucket. They've done everything I asked. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, you've got an excellent bucket in the form of Dana Evans. Uh, did she come off the bench at all during last night's game? All he had to do was give some of Allie Quigley's minutes to Dana Evans. That's all he had to do. Uh, that did not happen. You mean make an adjustment based on the performance on the court? You mean make a real-time adjustment, something that we hadn't done well all season? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, one would think that you would be able to just, you know, switch from that mindset in, into the postseason, but we, we just did not see that at all. Someone made a great point. I don't remember who it was, but I read it on Twitter last night, and they talked about how we included, for sure, I was definitely one of those people, we talked a lot of stuff about the Las Vegas's, like Las Vegas Aces bench, that they didn't have the depth. We talked a lot about how we probably had the deepest bench. We did. We did. I, I specifically remember saying that. And when people were talking, when I was getting in my little arguments with people about Seattle, and they kept saying, oh, Stewie has no help. I'm like, that's a lie. That's a bullshit like, that's a lie. lie. I actually really like you all's this bench. And when you look at Connecticut, I said, I ain't nobody scared of Connecticut. Well, how is it that the two teams that should have made it with their bench alone didn't make it? And that person said, we weren't wrong. We did have the best benches, but they weren't utilized properly. And to me, that all goes to coaching. I don't really know any way to say that nicely. I don't really care to. don't really want to sugarcoat it. But we had the bench. Why do it? Why have it if you're not going to use it? Now, something was brought to my attention earlier this week about, I won't say names, but there was a certain Sky player who everybody really wanted to be on the team. Um, and they said that Coach Wade said they loved her. Like, he loved her. He really wanted her to be on the team. But they were $1,000 short in what she needed for her contract because you have to meet the vet minimum like you have to meet whoever minimum like vet minimum i don't even know what the rookie minimum is but you have to meet it and that they are legally physically not able to take anything less and so it got into this whole it was a great twitter spaces um by erica mccall who is somewhere probably super excited that her sister has made it to the finals and it's like, wow, we see what's happening. Like when we talk about the CBA and they talked about how the CBA allowed players more money, like we see that they did get salary increases, but they didn't raise the salary cap. So because they didn't raise the salary cap and they raised people's salaries, 
are we just looking at what happens when teams have to sign players because they can afford them versus players that they actually want but can't sign? Is that what we're looking at? Is this a case of I needed them on the roster, so they're there, and I had no intention of playing them because I actually don't trust them and I actually don't want them on the team? Like, I'm not saying that's the case about Dana. Should not be the case whatsoever. But I just feel like why have a Ruthie, why have a Dana if you're not going to use them when we need them? Precisely. And they're both perfectly capable players, too. Uh, so last night I made a comment about uh, one argument against Dana is her size. Everyone always talks about she's small. Uh, she's not going to do well against Connecticut's bigs. Uh, my counter argument to that is I know they're not the same player at all, but Natisha Heideman. Uh, not too much taller than Dana, I think like an inch or two taller, uh, was the leading scorer for most of last night's game. So, uh, yeah, if Natisha can get buckets, why can't Dana? Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I don't like the size argument just mainly because there are so many successful smaller players in the W. So, yeah. I mean, I understand that it's definitely going to be more difficult for a smaller player, uh, just mainly like especially too if you're working against a team that has like just – excellent defense but yeah i honestly don't think that's valid i mean but also it's like what are you using them for sometimes like there's an advantage and a disadvantage to everything in my opinion especially when you have the alley and a sloot who are probably especially like when as right on the floor and i think her outside shot is kind of new but when you think about alley and sloot and you're like okay those are probably going to be the people making threes and they're not doing it why not bring out Dana, set a play that makes it look like Dana is taking a three, get some of Connecticut's bigs to hedge her, do whatever, come off. And what we were going to do a backdoor cut anyway, so then just have her do that. Like, there are things that you can do without actually needing her to do something where her size is relevant. She's also just really fast. Yep. Use Like, that has nothing to do with her height. Like, she doesn't have to – she could be a passer. She could be a playmaker. Like, she does, it doesn't have to be to shoot the ball, even though we've seen that she gets 10 points in 10 minutes. But if that's the argument, it's a terrible one. We just simply did not go to – and I've been saying it all year. It's an absolutely terrible <sighs> argument, just mainly because players like Natisha Heideman and Courtney Williams were just running – literally running circles around the sky all last night. Right. And At least so, use her for her defense to keep up with somebody. Like, keep up. Just run. And Dana does a really good job of just running with someone on the side. Rebecca does, too. Do that. Get them to force a pass. Make a slot. Like, you, the more you have them play at a faster pace, which is what Chicago was supposed to do, like, we want to play at our pace. If you get them to play at a faster pace and you get them – confused or you're, you're taking away their space and they're forced to make a pass that they didn't intend on making and you have someone like a Rebecca and a Dana who's going to anticipate that Exactly. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about Kurt Miller during this podcast uh, but he said in uh, one of the post-game sessions, I can't remember which game this was after, he said, uh, I say this in the nicest way possible, but we have to make this series messy. And then last night, uh, Dewana Bonner said this, we come up here and Chicago just kicks our ass. We figured it out. So um, the way they figured it out is, all right, Connecticut had some really excellent ball movement last night. They were, they were passing, they were making some great passes. Uh, they were absolutely uninterrupted. So like what you were saying earlier that like, yeah, there could have been a Dana, there could have been a Rebecca that definitely just interrupts and throws the, f the flow off of that ball movement. So uh, yeah, and it, 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 the, the sun had definitely figured the sky out pretty easily. Uh, I, I don't think there was really anything uh, complicated. I do remember in Becky Hammond's post game after the conference uh, or the, the the commissioner's cup, she was just absolutely just giving like a, do a a doctorate dissertation about what you need to do to completely dethrone the sky. Dewana Bonner, she just said, yeah, like like we just figured it out. We just got to move the ball uh, because we know they're not going to be creative in their rotations. We're going to see the same people. If, say Julie Alamon has a bad game. If 
uh, Allie Quigley, uh, bless her heart, if she has a bad game, uh, yeah, we're going to absolutely know that the ball is going to end up in their hands. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I am pretty disappointed with the way the play turned out, just mainly because it seemed as if defeating the sky was this just incredibly difficult, just complex puzzle to figure out. And it turns out it wasn't. It absolutely wasn't. Uh, and I think uh, this guy definitely shot themselves in the foot because of that. I mean, there were a lot of things we did, like simple stuff. And I understand you have the three-point queen. You have the finals MVP. We have some heavy hitters. But it you have to know your role, accept your role, and understand when people need your role to change. To me, it's okay to be this superstar, but if you have an off night, sit down. Like, I believe you can shoot yourself out of a slump. I've seen it. It happens. But it's like the same thing. Like, at this point, it was like, this person is not having a good series. This person is not having a good playoff run. Adjust. Like, is that not, like, I don't... I don't know. To me, you don't just have a backup person for if the person that they're starting behind gets injured or if they need a sub. Like, just why why are they there? I don't know. It was just we didn't do a lot of stuff right. If you know that you keep missing all these layups, trying to do fancy layups, why are you still trying to do the same layup in game five? It's the same old stuff. Uh, the Sun, they aren't stupid ball players. They are very smart ball players. They, they, they figured it out. Uh, yeah, this is just absolutely uh, not now that I mean, um, this morning when I woke up, I was still trying to digest just what happened last night. And I had this sense of acceptance where I'm just like, okay, um, I mean, it was a great season, a bittersweet ending to a great season. But now the more I think about it, the angrier I get. Because like y'all just had to win one. Like you 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 just needed one. They needed two when you needed one. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm very big on there are lessons and losses. Like there's a win and then there's a lesson. I don't even really call it a loss. As long as you get something out of it, you can find a win. The win the win in that New York Liberty loss or the lesson should have been don't do this shit again. Don't do it again. And you did it again. And it was worse. Like, their run was longer. That was insane. Y'all had it. it. It got to, like, I know what you said earlier about, can they hold on for 10 minutes? At one point, it was, can they hold on for five? And then <laughs> it was like, what about five two? Points. They only scored five points in one quarter. Like, and like this is what I said that game when we went on the run. If you are up and you have the lead, I don't even need you to necessarily increase the lead. If your offense isn't being offensive and you are just not hot, lock them up. Keep your lead. Sustain your lead with defense. If you cannot grow your lead with offense, then sustain your lead with defense. We didn't either. They acted like they didn't want to go nowhere. They was like, oh, you want to fly to Vegas? No, nah, I'm good. That's essentially what happened. I don't I don't get it. And I just also feel like they weren't being smart. Like, I, I get the energy, and I don't know if this was like some reverse psychology thing, but the momentum and the energy completely shifted after that tie-up or whatever that was between Dewana and Kai. Yeah. Because it's just was like, Kai, you had a tech. You had a tech already. You can't be in that position. And I know she said, I think maybe earlier, I don't know if it was in between quarters or during halftime, but they talked to her. She talked about her energy and how her and Candace can feed off each other's energy. And she was like, yeah, I told the team, like, I have to be the energy for the team. And when she said that, I was like, are you sure you want it to be you? Like, I'm not even being funny. I love Kai. That's my Virgo sis. But I know when I should not be their energy. 
Like, and in that game, I don't think it should have been her. Because if you're in it, like, and she's there to be riled up, that's great energy to have. But if we're talking about leading a team of energy, I want someone else's energy. I need, I need someone to cancel you out when you start being caught from North Philly. Because that's what happened with Duana. And it was like, after that, my mom told me this. And she is not a basketball person, not a WNBA person. She's like, yeah, when that how with that tie up between that girl and that other girl, she, they just seemed like the sky didn't do nothing after that. And I'm like, yeah, it, it threw off the energy. Then Coach Wade was over there. I'm like, sir, you're way out of your box. How did you even get in the screen? This is happening all the way on the baseline. You should not be over here. And at that moment, I was like, you know, I know I had a conspiracy theory which I still have, about why AT&T having a watch party for game one of the finals on Michigan in Chicago for game one. I'm like, okay, so y'all clearly think it's going to be a Las Vegas and Chicago finals because that's the only reason why we would need a watch party because if it had been Seattle, we would need a watch party because we would be playing at Wintra. So I'm like, okay, they clearly, in their mind, they're like, Chicago's going to make it to the finals and they're going to be away during game one and that's the only way that works. I knew when they didn't give Kyle that second tech because not only would she have not been able to play in game one of the finals, wouldn't she have been out of there with two techs? So when they didn't give her that second tech and they didn't give Coach Wade a tech for being all the way over there, I was like, oh, I don't know. That one referee was tripping at the beginning, but it's like clearly someone put a call. They were like, we're trying to – here you go, Chicago. Like, we're trying to give it to you. How do you lose a game that the referees are actively trying to give you? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, one could argue that uh, the sun beat the sky, but I think the sky beat themselves for sure. Uh, but if you are looking to not beat yourself, or maybe you are, I, I, I don't know. This is a very incredibly awkward transition. Uh, one way to help us continue to grow here at CHGO is to download the PointsBet app. Use code CHGO when you sign up, and not only are you going to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, make a $50, or what the heck. Oh, ESPN sucks. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> you will receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. If you have any uh, <clears throat> questions, email pointsbet at all CHGO. We'll help you out. Online sign-up is now available in Illinois. Download the PointsBet app right now. Register your account from start to finish all from your phone. You'll be signing up with the fastest sports book easier than ever, so you can start living your bet life in seconds. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Uh, all right, so we've been breaking down uh, this game uh, for most of the show here, uh, but... I do have a list of topics that I want to talk about. So, Sabria, you ended the last segment uh, talking about refs trying to give you the game. So, in the first half, um, th there was an egregious list of absolutely shit calls. Uh, so, uh, I do remember Quiggs getting called on that clear block. I thought that was a bunch of crap. Um, uh, Ka uh, getting attacked for elbowing Courtney Williams in the face. Um, I didn't see it, uh, or at least I, I didn't get a close view of it, uh, but yeah, it just seemed very egregious to me at the time. Uh, Emma got a call on a charge, uh, and then Candace got a, a, a call on a steal as well. Uh, so even though, uh, yeah, the, the, the refs for the, like, m were mostly just very, just out of pocket in my opinion, but, uh, yeah, to see those calls and also see this guy just not playing to the high level of, of talent that we know they have, uh, that just added on to the frustration. That ref got a lot of slander on Twitter. Rightfully so. It was uh, Cheryl Flores, I believe, is the ref that everyone was was dragging on Twitter. And I got into some... I wouldn't call them arguments, but I had some discussions with people on Twitter. Like, Connecticut fans were like, how do Chicago fans think that they're getting bad calls? I'm like, what? Like, did you watch the first half? It was terrible. Like, that Candace call was terrible. Calling Ka when you didn't even review the worst, 
like if you're gonna choose between the two, the one that AT did to Candace to me was worse. So for you to not even look at that and then call that on caught, it was just like really guys? Yeah, yeah. Uh that the, the AT uh what AT did to Candace in game four, like it was definitely like it happened so quickly, but upon review, yes, it definitely looked like a dirty play. There was like no review of that. Uh, there was no review on uh, Ka's elbow. Uh, so yeah, it's like, make it make sense. Like that, that there's not a, that, that there is no consistency here. And like we've said before in the past, like you never know what you're going to get out of these refs. So I mean, like as, until they establish some kind of standard, they won't. It's just sort of like, say, uh, the Sky need to play around that or at least play better than what the refs are giving them. And and someone else brought this up. I don't remember who, but like last week, I think, they were talking about how the refs are the only people that don't have to do media. And there's so many questions that we want. Like, so why did you call this on Ka for – an inadvertent elbow in this game, but you did not call the elbow from that Candace received from AT. Definitely not in like a basketball shooting motion. Like that play was completely different. Why? And we don't know. And so players are obviously confused. And it's like the only time they can get clarification is real time in the game. And then it's like, well, do you want to do that? Because if they tee you up, or if you mess up the momentum of whatever's going on, it's just annoying. And even like Diamond was on Twitter um, about that Khan Dewana thing. She was like, "What? If that was, they were like, they would have teched up half of the Mercury. You probably right, but y'all also probably deserved it." Oh my goodness, yeah, because I know like the Mercury have a reputation, uh, but I mean. <laughs> But yeah, it, it was very interesting to kind of see some of the takes from uh, other other players in the league, uh, what they thought on the calls from yesterday. I think uh, Lexi Brown even had a couple of things to say about uh, some calls. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, if, if, if they can see it, if we can see it, like then. I mean, I don't know, because we saw everything that was wrong with the sky. We said we talked about it in spaces. We talked about it on here. Everyone on the timeline saw it. They clearly didn't see it, so I don't know. All right, so we talked earlier about Ellie Quigley. Uh, she went 0 for 6 uh, from 3 uh, and 1 from 12 from the field. Uh, she just really had a terrible postseason overall. Uh, but going back to threes, uh, the whole team went 8 for 25. That is 32%. So I know, like, threes, like, don't make or break games, but of course, too, if a, a team like the Sun is going to force you to shoot threes, they have to land. So, yeah, uh, this seems to have been the case for like the past couple of games, just even near the end of the season, where it seems as if this team uh, just has forgotten how to shoot threes. Uh, I mean, just maybe overall, like for for, for forgetting how to play basketball. Uh, but anyway, I, I know like we've talked before in the past about living and dying by the three. Uh, but it seems to me as if the sky died by the three. Yep. Yep. I mean, we died in all the ways we've been dying before. Like, I don't even I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record that I don't even want to keep thinking. That's I don't very, know. I know. Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely just the same, the same problems that we've discussed over and over and over again. So uh, also, too, uh, Candace also was very off yesterday. Uh, she seemed gassed pretty early. Uh, the Sky benefit, like when, whenever Candace does well, the Sky do well. Uh, so mm, I don't know because we definitely lost that game one with her amazing performance. It should well, have that, that. that's one example. Yes, that is one example. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, she did not have like I don't know. It seems as if uh, Kalia Copper showed up yesterday at least. Uh, so she, she was off for the past two games. 22 points, four steals, two rebounds, two assists, one block. At least she was playing as if this was an elimination game. I'm just 
just so mad because now I just remembered that we should have won that first game. And if we had won the first game and the second game and the third game, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. So like, there are so many things that we could just take apart and just absolutely just uh, make itemized lists about what, what went wrong. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that fourth quarter. Uh, so the Sun outscored the Sky 24-5 in the fourth quarter, finished on an 18-0 run. Um, 18 unanswered points, uh, that is going to lose you ball games. So uh, Courtney Vandersloot said this, uh, we were scared to lose instead of trying to win. We ran out of gas, of course, with three people over 33. Uh <sighs> These things happen. The ball didn't go our way. Um, there, there, there was also plenty of talk yesterday at the, the post game about how uh, the basket, the ball did not go into the basket. Yes, we know. We absolutely know. And earlier in the show, uh, we absolutely discussed how to fix that. <laughs> yes. If you're gassed, why don't you get somebody that is not probably the people who've been sitting on the bench the whole series? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I don't I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. And I just really don't. It's hard to have sympathy. Like, I don't have sympathy. I wasn't sad. Like I said, I accepted the loss well before it happened. I, like I said, I knew we were going to lose. Prepared myself for the loss. But I just don't have sympathy for it because another it's another loss well one we shouldn't have even made it to a game five elimination we shouldn't have no but i'm also not sympathizing with any of it because it was all avoidable even then i don't i don't have it in me i can't say that we were robbed oh thank you um can't say we were robbed we weren't like i said the refs the ball didn't go your way but at the end the refs were so it's just like, I don't know what they want me to say other than y'all should have made subs. I I don't have too much else really at all. Yep. Uh, so uh, I, I think, uh, so, so you've already reached the acceptance stage. I think uh, I was angry. I don't know. I think I think like the stages of grief can definitely be interchanged where it's like, all right, so so I was angry and now I'm like back in acceptance. I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I mean, it's whatever. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, 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 the this basketball team that we like like somehow like lost a game. And yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world, but it's the end of the season. And as much as I have accepted the loss, I am very much still angry. Like I'm not gonna let it go because it was dumb. It like I said, I would have understood maybe if it was like the Seattle Vegas loss. That that was a great game. The last two, I think like their whole series, it was a lot of shoulda coulda wouldas right and i'm okay with those if we're talking about something in like the last two minutes or like what you could argue was like the call that changed everything we don't have those because we should be winning by a lot of like at least five like we had it up there to where i can't even say oh well that one thing changed because it, it's never even close it doesn't even get close it's just like not far enough for comfort for us because we as Sky fans, we understand, we know that that lead is not safe. And that's the problem. It I was also, all avoidable. Just, I also think too, just the way that this team played this season, a lot of us were getting used to the fact that the Sky uh, will just mop teams, like just come out with like 20, like, like 30 point victories. And at this point, when we reach the postseason, we expect that same level of play. So when that drops off, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, um, like Sky Show said, sad. I am sad again. Um, so he also said this. I'm curious if there was a hidden injury to Candace after the AT extra activity in game three. Her play fell off a bunch, those in closeout games. Um, yeah, and I mean, if 
if, if that's true, I mean, we're, we're, we're probably never going to hear of it, uh, just mainly because just like I, I know how this team is. Uh, when it comes to injuries, uh, just a, a quick uh, side note, I honestly think that we were pretty blessed by the fact that we didn't really have any. I mean, yes, we were short the Yuru. We could have definitely used her defense protecting the rim, I think, during the series. Uh, but for the most part, the fact that everyone stayed at least visibly healthy to us uh, was a blessing, uh, just mainly because I know it's deep in the season. I know that a lot of the times, too, uh, they only uh, had one day of rest. So the fact that they were all healthy at face value, I, I, I think uh, we should have taken better advantage of that. I agree. And prevent people from getting injured by doing what? Going to the bench. Again, it it's to me it's all it's all coaching GM things. Just the whole Leah Ruth situation was tricky. But it's one of those things where in the moment it's it's a bet. And bets either pay off or they don't. In this case, we needed somebody. Right. Somebody. And we just didn't have that person because that was the decision that was made. Again, tricky, complicated situation. But all the things that you account for, I feel like when you're putting together a team, pick players that you know you can, you know, use. Use the players that you have. Like, I don't really know. I don't really know what else. Like, it doesn't require a deep analysis. Like, it's almost so simple, I don't know what to say. But I also don't feel bad about them having to travel today. They're on the private plane today, I believe. They're probably there already or really close, and then they get a day in between. I don't care. Don't care. I think this is still going to be, and I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm not, this is going to be the world's most boring series ever. Like, this is going to be a boring finals. I I genuinely expect for Vegas to just come in there and do everything we thought we were going to do to Connecticut, and it's not even going to be close. Everyone in the press room yesterday after uh, the game uh, said the same thing. Uh, if uh, the, the aces are basically going to mop the sun, just going to mop it like a hard, mop them like a hardwood floor. Um and honestly, I will be very shocked if they do not take all three games. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess the good thing is there will be a new champ. Like, neither Vegas or Connecticut have won before. I'm hoping that the universe continues to fall in Vegas' favor. So once again, this is like a thing where I wanted us to win the Commissioner's Cup and then the championship, like a back-to-back. -back. Someone called Vegas our cousins, and I feel like they are. It's like, yes, they're our rival, but, like, if we're not going to be there, I'm going to root for them. Like, shout-out to Asia, the MVP, and Depoy. Absolutely. So I'm Absolutely. rooting for them because they're almost like the Connecticut – they're like the new Connecticut Sun from last year because they have the MVP and Depoy – most improved coach of the year. Definitely. So yeah. And I'm I'm really rooting for them for sure. Like I really want them to molly wipe them. I would love this as history since uh Becky did not win a ring when she was a player. Love it for her to get this her. now. Obviously would love it for Asia. I just don't want anything good for Connecticut. That the shade towards Candace from Kurt was just weird but that's in my my the last segment right i guess i'll wait <laughs> yeah uh, i don't I also have anything wanna, good for connecticut i also want to point out that um yeah like like as a as a spurs fan i am cheering hard for becky uh so she'll have uh she'll have two rings she'll have her spurs ring and hopefully her her ring with the aces so i'm just excited for her all around but uh, my goodness, uh, that brings me to the last portion of this segment. Uh, so a couple of you have brought this up in the comments. Uh, so Antoine Johnson says, uh, who do you bring back 
because you have, I believe, seven players who will be free agents. Uh, we mentioned this uh, in a show not too long ago, that if you look at SpotTrack.com and look at the Chicago Skies contract, uh, everyone's leaving. Uh, it's going to be a very different team next year. Uh, so Sky Show also said, uh, Wade played his vets heavy, and it makes sense, especially if it felt like this is their last go around with the franchise. So, uh, of course, too, uh, you already mentioned one of the players, uh, Candace, uh, in the post-game conference yesterday, she said that she will reevaluate in the off season on whether or not she will able she will be able to return uh, to the high level of play that she holds herself to. So at this point, uh, not exactly sure how to interpret that. Uh, the face value interpretation is that she's going to see she's going to see if uh, you know the off season doesn't beat her up too much. But I'm hoping she comes back. I am hoping she comes back. I mean, I've also accepted that this is the last time we're going to see this team. I mean, it would have been nice to to play everyone in a system that won. So at least even if they are, you know, possibly playing their last few games with us, we could have given them some more games and possibly a chance at repeating. But I don't know. The Candace situation is very tricky. Um I really would have just loved this for her even more. Just like get another one and we'll see you in legend land. Like great goodbye, a great send off. Um, some people took Allie's comments in the post game presser as if she might be ready to hang it up. I think That's we were talking about this though, before they signed this last like one year deal. Like, is this the last time we're going to see them? I get it. Like we're in a we're in a transition period. I think rebuild is strong, but I'm I've accepted that. I'm okay with that. Just as long as they're in a position to get a Nisa Morrow when she comes out of default, I don't care what they do the next year or the year after that. I'm okay. We can still we can still ride high from our win from last year, and we will be okay for like a couple years. As long as we don't start reaching Indiana fever territory, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So Sky Show's comment, uh, do you think this type of Game 5 convinces Quigley Parker to stay as more of redemption or more like, I'm gassed, get me out of here? Uh, so uh, we've talked about Candace, but I personally think Ellie Quigley is done. Uh, I'm, I kind of wish she didn't have to go out like she did. She had an incredibly terrible postseason, uh, but... Uh, just kind of observing her mannerisms, and you mentioned her comments in the po in the in the uh, post game as well. Uh, I think she maybe I, I know like she'll she'll probably have to talk it over with Courtney, of course, uh, wh whose return probably is going to be contingent on uh, Ellie and vice versa. But I mean, Salute has played her entire career with this guy. Um, I, I know that there have been a couple of comments about her being Sue Bird's replacement in Seattle. I know that's her hometown. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but at this point, I, I, I think the two of them retire this offseason. But I mean, I would love to see them back with the Sky, if anything. Uh, but like, like, Sky, like, like Sky Show said, it, it would be a nice redemption for next season. But that's not a redemption, though. To me, and a redemption is when you have been wronged and you're like, you know what, I'm coming back. Like, this was more so redemption, I think, for Connecticut because they were like, we're not letting that happen like we did last year. But, I mean, even then, that was on them. But this is like, this was a stupid loss. To me, there's nothing to motivate this was y'all fault. This was on y'all. I don't know if y'all should have just had mirrors on the sideline. And when the last time out was called, everybody should have just looked in the mirror and was like, hey, it's me. I'm the one who's in control. You have to control what you can control. And that's what I'm saying. This isn't like a, a loss where you were wrong, where it came down to the referees. Y'all was just tweaking. What, I, what motivation is like you should have motivated yourself in that last time out and did what you had to do and motivated yourself some more on that plane on the way to Vegas. But we're not at Vegas. You're at home. And I feel like they are probably going to say that they, that's not my, 
Siobhan, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> that's not, that's not to me motivation. Like there's a fine line between listening to what the universe is telling you and not letting something stop you. In this instance, this was truly them stopping themselves and having to be like, all right, I get, I try, especially if they gave it all. Like, that's another thing. If you're off, you're off. And maybe in your mind, you're like, okay, I can redeem myself. But if in the back of their minds, they're like, yo, I literally gave it all that I had. And then some, and I literally don't have anything left. Then I have some lovely velvet hangers from Amazon that I can give them to hang it up. <laughs> That's hilarious because I love those hangers. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, all right. So uh I I, I yeah, oh my goodness. Uh um so my next note is about Azure Stevens. Uh she is going to get paid. Uh by who though? By who though? We don't know. I I feel as if she could uh, definitely get a great starting job somewhere else. She's been really fantastic off the bench uh, for the sky this year. Um, but who knows, maybe she uh, ends up in a starting role. I mean, I know uh, we all want Candace back, but uh, I, I, I think Azure too um, has been following Candace around pretty much all season long. And I don't think that's a coincidence. So in that case, where do you see Azure going? I don't know. It depends. I have to do a real deep dive on where a lot of these players are going overseas because there's been a lot of talk about that. Um, like Brianna Stewart, Gabby Williams, for sure, about the prioritization causes that are about to be enacted um, next season where if they're not back by, what, training camp, they get fined. And then the year after that, if you're not back by – the home opener you are suspended for the rest of the season so i think there's gonna be some what's the word i'm looking for some protests there so i feel like anywhere could end up anybody can end up anywhere when you have teams that have star players like we don't know where stewie is gonna go let's say stewie was gonna go to was going to stay in Seattle, whether she's going to go to New York or not, but if she stays in Seattle and she's like, well, I'm protesting, I'm not coming back because I'm not paying a fine and I want to go play overseas, that opens up a spot for someone like Azure, where we didn't even think that that would be a thing. And I think it's really all going to come down to that. Like, this is going to be a crazy, crazy off season. Someone mentioned that Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker are going to be free agents. Do we see a do we see a reunion? Will they be reunited? Now that Derek is out of LA, will they go back to LA and give them one more run? And I don't know. It's a lot of storylines. People could end up anywhere. I really don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh and I know, I mean, like uh Candace has only been with the sky for two seasons. Uh, but at this point, like I'm attached, seeing her play for anyone else is going to break my heart. Uh, yeah, it only took two years for her to do that. So congratulations, Candace. Um, right, uh, let's go and move to our final segment of the pod Court of Law. And we already mentioned our topic for Court of Law. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Kurt Miller's shade at Candace Parker. Or was it shade? Uh, there's been some talk on shade. Twitter. You, you, you think it was shade? I thought it was shade, too. It I was. thought it was shade, too. Uh, but this perspective was brought to my attention. All right. So uh, Miller wants to point out that his team has knocked Candace Parker out of the playoffs uh, the last three out of four seasons. And he wants his post to get credit in that. All right, okay, whatever. So here is uh, Miller's full quote via James K. An interesting dynamic three years around, and I do want to get on the record for this. She, referring to Candace Parker, is an incredible all-time great in this league. But I hope someone writes the combination of Jonquil Jones, Alyssa Thomas, and Bree Jones have knocked her out of three of the last four years. I hope that post group gets credit for what they do night in and night out for us. I really hope our post game gets the credit they deserve. So at face value, 
could be a little shady. I thought it was at the time. Uh, James K. brought this perspective in that maybe Kurt Miller was using Candace as a measure of greatness that, okay, so uh, when you knock a Candace Parker out of the playoffs, then yes, that, that, that is a measure of greatness. But Candace Parker's response to that was, we don't hang conference banners. She could have chosen to interpret it as shade, but hey, maybe she did, but she handled it with grace. So props to Candace on that. But anyway, I know uh, you have plenty of thoughts on this, so I'm going to let you go off. I need the rules. Joey, what are the rules? How many times can I curse on this before I get in trouble? Like, and what curse words can I say? Which ones can I not say? Like, I'm being very serious. <laughs> like, I'm can you sure put that, that somewhere? Can you come on here and tell me? I don't know, but I need to know before I respond. I think you just can't say the F word. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can say shit. I mean, I just said it. So. <laughs> you, you could say what you want, Sabria. Okay, okay. There we go. So we got Shut Joey's endorsement. That's how I feel, Kurt. Shut the fuck up. Because you're not that great. Like, I don't. I don't really care. Like, first of all, if you want to talk about the greatness of your players, talk about how Alyssa Thomas, like everyone else, run that narrative into the ground about the amazing comeback she's had from her injuries, how she was second in deep boy, how she received a large number of MVP votes to lead her team to the finals. Talk about that. Talk about how Bree Jones is completely dominating six player of the year. But at what point do I look at you and be like, why you keep letting her dominate six player of the year when she should be a starter by now? If you want to talk about that, who was the other person? I'm not too much on Jasmine Thomas. Cause I love her. So I'm not going to say anything, but Kurt, if you want to talk about something, let's talk about how you have the most wins in playoff history and no fucking rings. How dare you? I don't really give a fuck about that being a measure of greatness. Candace Parker is greatness. You can say that and let that be. And you could talk about how great your players are, but don't sit here and first of all, group them together. Like, did you stretch for, before that reach, you want to group them together and then put them together and say, well, look at how great they are because they've not Candace. And where are their rings? Where are y'all rings? You did all of this greatness and still there's no greatness. And that's why I hope Vegas whooped they ass because that was so that that was so stupid. And I, I need people to understand that you can lift up your own without tearing someone else down. If you wanted to lift them up, you could have look at how um Alyssa Thomas received an MVP vote like Candace Parker, or look at how dominating Candace Parker has been in the last few seasons of her career and how she is steady in the playoffs going for a ring with these players. There was a lot of ways to do with and with and with and next to and close to and together. But instead you were like, look at how these people are so great that they have knocked her off of her pedestal. What? And you still have no, first of all, don't get me started because I'm going to end up going on a whole rant and just everybody in Connecticut is going to just start catching strays for no reason. I don't want to do that. But <laughs> first of all, sir, you want to talk about this? You were just in your own huddle crying to your players about how they can't make layups trying to figure out how do professional players make layups talking about how you were going to get fired. You need to be thanking Chicago for saving your job, Kurt. That's what you need to do. You're welcome. That's what you could have thanked Candace for and threw her like a little gift or something to thank the team for letting you possibly see another day unless you get to the finals and choke again. But that's what you that's where your energy should have been. You really should have commended your players for doing a great job and rallying because after you went in their faces and told them that they can't make layups and you was about to get fired and you sent your team back onto the court. We continued whooping their ass and you essentially lost your team that game because I don't really know what he thought that was going to motivate them to do. Maybe they want you to lose your job. Maybe they don't fucking like you. I don't know. But that didn't have anything to do with Candace Nicole Parker. The disrespect was unnecessary. Another day, another weird ass man with weird ass energy and weird ass comments trying to shit on Candace Nicole Parker for no reason. Yeah, uh, I think as someone commented on Twitter, like, does Candace Parker just go around secretly kicking puppies or something? Because just like, why why does everyone have it out for her? It's just just remembering like all star voting too, like that was I, I still remember the disrespect there. I, I I keep the receipts. I remember that, and yeah, uh, the fact that. Uh, Kurt had to say all of that. And I think uh, a lot of us were talking yesterday 
um, or it says, is he Christian, um, uh, AKA uh, 808s. I get where James was coming from, referring to James K, uh, but it's still an unnecessary comment. Candace playing one on five, it's true. Like, like they, they, they beat the sky. And there's absolutely no, I beat Candace Parker banners. There are no conference banners like she brought up. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to say here, except um, aces and three. <laughs> I hope they whoop their ass. Like, please talk. Like, it, man, talk your shit when you get to a place where you can. You still talking your shit from outside of the club. She got two entrances into the club with her two rings. You have none. You want to talk your shit. Why are you even thinking about her? Your team just made history. Your team just embarrassed us in front of the families, the the hoes, and everybody else. And your first response to that was, look at how we've beaten Candace Parker. Like, do you want her on your team that bad? Do you do you like her? Like, it, what what is it? what is the problem that that was really weird yeah i think i get james trying to to be that person and, and maybe that's just his character where you know he wants to give everyone the benefit of doubt because maybe he would never stoop to this level of saying something dumb like that i'm just that's what i'm gonna say i'm gonna choose to focus on the great person that james is for having that mentality but yeah there's no way like i said that that's what that was because it easily could have been my mama just texted me and told me to stop cursing <laughs> ah. <laughs> stop cursing I think you like you only said like the f word like twice, <laughs> so and I, I mean it, it was definitely warranted though in my opinion, in, in, I in my professional was. opinion. I, I I I think you know, hey, like someone needs, needs to tell him to shut the fuck up. It might as well be you. So that's how I feel. Listen, that's been my motto all season is is keeping it fair, like not too much my whole thing this whole season has been not too much on this player and then there's this weird dynamic too like that's not your friend if Alyssa wants to say that because we all know she has some feeling she needs to unpack against Candace if one of them wanted to say it fine but as a coach like that's not even your place y'all not friends who are you to sit here and like try to go to that level with Candace I think it was really weird again misplaced energy you could have used that same energy to uplift the players that you just told a couple days ago they couldn't make layups and was about to cost you your job talk about how they banded together because you need to worry about why jj look like she want to quit the team every two seconds too if you if there's some stuff you want to go and talk about we could talk about that we could spend our energy there but giving that straight to candace i don't like it we need to have a serious conversation where there's like pop your stuff and talk your stuff rightfully so and then there's picking on certain players like how people did earlier in the season with Tina and continue to do when Tina decided not to um, participate in her exit interview the same way Candace decided not to participate in the huddle who is somebody who loves to have teams on the back of their shoulders they had one job they're very confident in what they do when they're here in, in front of the fans and win trust and Obviously, they felt let down. And if she don't want to participate in no huddle, then she could do that. But, like, either you're going to give the players the space to do what they need to do and what they want to do, and you're going to do that, or you're going to sit here and do what you're doing and pick on certain players, and then, like, a week from now, you're going to hashtag mental health. Like, pick one. It was just unnecessary. It was stupid. It's a trend that I see um, around certain players more than others, and I'll – I'll leave it at that. Whew. <laughs> I can't laugh too hard, just mainly because just like I, I start going into a coughing fit, but everything you said was absolute facts. Uh, but uh, given that, that is the end of our show. Uh, and also, too, I have a bit of news. Uh, today's show will also be uh, my last covering CHGO Sky. Uh, so I know I wanted to leave that to the very end. So I just wanted to thank everyone for rolling with us this entire season. And also, too, Sabria, thank you. You've taught me so much this entire year. And, uh, yeah, what a rush it has been. Uh, it, it's been overwhelming. It's been, well, I, I guess, like, the last game was very underwhelming. So I just wanted to thank you for all you do. And, and yeah. Um, 
anyway, as we head towards the off season, I mean, typically I will end this show with like a sky and four or whatever, but I don't know. Maybe it is still sky and four. Maybe that is the internal energy. Yes. Always the internal energy we have it on the shirt. Shout out to play society. That'll be our thing. Maybe it's net. Maybe now it means sky and four more years, but sky and four, whatever. All right. Well, thank you all for rolling with us all year. Uh, that's pretty much it. This is the CHGO podcast. Uh, my name is Janice Scurrio. I'll still be around, though. I am still going to be following this team and also still to uh, just yelling all the time. And of course, Sabria, uh, where can uh, folks follow you, see your work, all that stuff? Always follow me at Sabria Whitaker on all socials, as well as at Grow the Game W. I'll always be around, always come, holler at me in WNBA Twitter, catch me in spaces, say hey to me on the street at games. We're still one big happy family. Absolutely. All right. Until next time, Sky and Four.